what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Atasha Bronson was fed up with life. So she grabbed her two young daughters, got into her vehicle, and went on Facebook Live as she drove aimlessly, looking for the perfect object to slam into and commit suicide. Now, Aisha said that the reason why she wanted to commit suicide is because the guy that she was dating, she found out he was married. This guy's name is Glenn Jameson Jones, according to her. She put him on blast. Now she said that she grew up in a good environment. She said she had a good life. She was the only child on her mother's side. Her mother pretty much spoiled her. She spoiled her, gave her everything that she wanted. She never had to work. She only worked because she, she wanted to. She said even when she had babies, her mother took care of her. She had five babies in all. Now, one of the kids was, the youngest kid was the child of the guy who was married, according to Aisha. She wanted to end her life because this guy cheated on her. Or was he cheating on his wife? He deceived her. She found out he was not loyal. He lied to her. And so she felt betrayed. Betrayed enough to not only take her own life, but to take the life of her two young daughters. She said the reason why she wanted to take her daughter's lives is because you can't leave your daughters with anybody. She feared, I guess, that if she left her daughters with somebody, they would be molested or whatever, or worse. It's hard to figure out what would be worse than molestation, I guess, death. But... In any event, she had three boys that she was going to leave to somebody else to take care of, I guess, her mother. Now, she said that in, despite the fact that she had a good life, she wanted to end her life because she didn't want to hurt anymore. She wanted to stop the pain. She also confessed that she herself used to be wild. She said, you know, I used to, you know, be out there. And, you know, she was talking about a point in her life when she wasn't so good. But she changed all of that for this guy, Glenn. And come to find out, she gave everything to Glenn. And... Glenn betrayed her. And that was enough for her to want to kill herself. She also admitted that Glenn would never do any dumb shit like that for her. I don't want to appear to be uh, not empathetic towards Aisha. So don't don't get me wrong here, fam. Don't don't try to don't try to read anything into it more than what it is. I'm telling you straight up that I feel it. I've been there myself. But one thing that I realized is that these problems that we have in our life are like objects in a rearview mirror. Every day that we wake up, we get a little further away from those problems. 
just like when you're driving. You get a little further away from the object. And the further you drive, the smaller the object becomes. Until it gets to a point where you don't even see the object anymore. Even cities. You can be flying over a city. It becomes so small that you don't even see it anymore. It's like it becomes a speck. And then you can't even see the city anymore. You see new horizons. That's the way life is. So if you keep on waking up, that problem gets smaller and smaller. There have been times when I thought I, could, I was not going to survive certain things. And every single time I got through it. And when I look at all of the things that I was thinking about that made me trip, like I'm talking about deep trip. I trip. Like, damn, I can't really believe that I was thinking like that. Especially about her. Or her. Or her. Like, the thing is, if you're a good person, you don't deserve to be with somebody who don't respect you. Somebody who is not going to be loyal to you. Somebody who is undeserving of you. So when we try to force ourselves onto people who don't reciprocate our love, we find ourselves in real bad situations because nobody likes to feel rejected. And so it, and here's the crazy thing about rejection. You can start a relationship off where somebody might love you more than you love them. And then at some point, for whatever reason, maybe it's, maybe it's because you took them for granted or whatever, you used and abused them or whatever. But at some point, you start loving them more than they love you because they don't love as much. For whatever reason, they lost interest and they don't love as much. They're not loving as hard. Now, you are feeling the rejection. And now you're trying harder to please that person. That's kind of how life goes. It's a cycle. And usually in relationships, somebody loves more than the other person. And, and sometimes it swings and then sometimes it's balances out. But that's kind of how it goes. So when she said that there was times when she was, you know, wilding out or whatever. I wonder if that included relationships with guys. Because oftentimes when you're in these relationships, what happens is that somebody do you dirty and y'all break up or whatever and then you're mad, you want revenge, so you do somebody else dirty. And then you do somebody else dirty. And then you do somebody else dirty. Because you're a savage. This person, you gave your whole heart to this person. And they use and abuse you. So now you want revenge. And you just, man, you want some fuck love type stuff, right? You're a savage. Breaking hearts left and right. Then at some point, you want to get serious and settle down because look, it's not even, you understand that that type of behavior is really toxic. So you want to settle down and get somebody that love you for, for you. And then finally, when you're ready to really, really settle down, that person that you gave up everybody else for plays you. And then you snap again. And then here we go to cycle again. And then that person that did you dirty, that person finally get their mind right and find somebody that they want to really settle down with. They ready to settle down, so they find that person they want to settle down with. Then that person do them dirty. 
And it's just a vicious cycle. And the reason for that vicious cycle is that we take old baggage into relationships. We take old baggage into new relationships. We are imperfect people looking for perfect people. And this is what gets us in trouble oftentimes. So Aisha was, you know, in the video saying that, you know, she wants to end her life because of this one guy, this one situation. She said, oh, well, you know, I had a good life. But this one situation, this one dude who turns out to be a scumbag because he got a wife and he got a whole other life going on. He got a wife and a other life with a side chick. And Aisha felt like she couldn't go on. Luckily, she survived. She survived. One of the kids survived and the other kid, well, both kids survived, but one of the kids is being reported in critical condition. I don't have an update, but when I get one, I'll let you know. But one of the kids is in critical condition. I don't know which one it is but she survived and she made a video talking about it was an accident. I don't know how that goes, but I just want you to know, fam, if you're out there, you're having a tough time. This is the risk we, we take when we play the game of love. Love don't love nobody. There are greater people than you and I who have been hurt by love and the best thing that you can do when you've been hurt by love is to fall back get yourself together all the way together get back strong get healthy get 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 love strong and then jump out there. Don't jump back out there half-assed. Don't jump out there when you like, well, you know, I'm going to reserve some of this love because I just don't know. And you know, I get it if you just don't know and it's your first date or it's the, you know, the first month or the, or the first eight months or whatever, maybe a year. But, you know, you holding back after dating a person for six years, 10 years. Get healthy love. You know what I'm saying? Get that love healthy. And then, then jump back out there. Get back in the game. Because really, human beings were made for each other. We were made for companionship. All these people talking about, I don't need nobody. I can do it. I said, man, that ain't nothing but that ain't nothing but but insecurity, and it's a defense mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. That's all it is. People trying to play tough. It's just like racist people. You know, these people are insecure. So they use racism to mask that insecurity. They're insecure. So we were made for each other. Human beings were made to have companionship. Not with a dog. Not with a cat. Not with a hamster or a peacock, but other human beings. So if you've been injured, dust yourself off. Get back love healthy. And get back in the game. And go get the W. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah.